Many of you by now will be very familiar with the idea of taking Ordnance Survey mapping data from suppliers such as ProMap, incorporating it within your drawings for things like site location plans. What many people are not quite so aware of though is how you can take the data that can also be supplied, height data for instance, and aerial imagery, and incorporate that within your drawings too, utilizing it to produce site surface models, to produce site sections, to produce site contours complete with all of the, the heights noted. Uh, we can also use the, the aerial photographic images to drape across our sites, so our contoured sites, so that we can actually see the lay of the land in relation to the, the aerial photograph. And these aerial photographs we can get from the likes of ProMap, as I say, but also things like Google Earth, Microsoft Virtual Earth, and we can download those straight into our drawings with the Caddy survey application. So let's take a look at how we can introduce the raw information in the first instance. So the first step to getting the information in is to load the DXF file. So we can either go to the shortcut here or file open, makes no difference there. Uh, we have the folder where we're looking, we can search through the folders that we have on our machine or network. We have no items there at the moment and that's because we're looking, we're filtering on AutoCAD drawing files which is star.dwg, so all files with a dwg extension. Now if I click on the files of type entry there, then we have different options and we're going to select AutoCAD DXF. So now we see our files and there's the export one, now that's the mapping data. So in the first instance we're going to load that. Having loaded our DXF file, we will find that we have a, a little prompt here which says drawing has no units assigned, go to settings uh, to assign them. Now what this means is that the, the drawing is actually drawn in just CAD units. So there, there is no direct correlation between the CAD unit and say meters, which in this case the drawing will be, or millimeters or inches or, or whatever unit you, you would like to uh, ascribe to it. So let's take a look at what we have here. We'll OK that and then go to our model space setup. And there we are, base units non-assigned. So we'll go to our base units and we'll assign meters. Everything else in there we can ignore for the moment and we'll OK that. We still see no, no drawing. Uh, the, the drawing will be drawn probably some way off our normal drawing uh, area. So if we do a zoom extents, something we can accomplish either by pressing the zoom extents up here or F4 on the keyboard and that will take us to show us uh, our drawing. Having loaded the mapping information we can now go and open the height data. We don't need to open a new drawing, we can simply add the information to it. If we go to file, open other and absolute, this will load the information in the same relative place within our drawing, in other words over the top. So we say absolute, we change the file extension to be DXF, we can find the, the DSM data, that's the, the surface model data which gives us the, uh, the buildings, the roads, the vegetation, natural terrain features as opposed to bare earth which would be the DTM, and we open that. So this will load the data over the top and as we see there we have a very white drawing. Now the reason for that, if we zoom in, we can see that we have a whole load of points, a whole mass of points all over our drawing. So zooming out it just obscures what we have. So what can we do about that to, to have a, a closer look? Well if we go to our construction line menu here and go into there we see we're just sliding down the menu slightly we can set the construction points to maybe a lighter colour we can set them to be just a, a simple point and a point size there that will give us a, gr uh, a greater view of our, our drawing so if we hit R for regen we can now see the combination of the two having produced our combined drawing what we can now do is go and save it so we can either get file and uh, save as, or we can do save as here, and we can have our DWG file now. Having created our combined file, we, we now have a 3D model 
So if we, we want to orbit around it and have a look at the, the profile of the site, we can do that. So how do we do it in CADI? Well, to, to do a 3D orbit, we simply place our finger on the shift key and left click the mouse and just push and move it around. We can move it to whatever angle we like and we can see there our 3D image and we'll zoom in on it and turn it around a little more. Okay. Uh, if we want to tilt it, if we want to tilt it, then we use the middle button on the mouse. Again, holding the shift key down and depressing the middle scroll wheel on the mouse and just tilting. So that shows us how we can load uh, the information into CADI from the likes of Promap, the height data and the mapping data, and combine them to give us a representation of the site. What we'll do in the next video is take a look at how we can process that information, how we can derive from it a, a 3D surface tin model, that's a, a triangular irregular network model uh, of, of planes which uh, join up to show us the surface of the site, how we can produce sections from it, how we can produce site contours uh, for a 2D representation and how we can drape images across our model to get a, a much clearer picture of what's going on with the site itself. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.